welcome back to another episode of Art Life. This week is all about still life and I'm going to start by painting a pear. I'm Jessie. I've been a full-time artist for 10 years and thought it about time I start sharing my painting techniques and adventures. Subscribe to join me every week for a window into my art life. I've been doing loads of still life recently. My sister has just got back from studying classical painting in Florence um, and she's really fresh with painting still lives. We've been doing still lives together and I've been picking her brain like refreshing how to do them. There's a huge history with still lives but to keep it really simple it's about tone and value and colour and form in painting. It's a really good way to just get your skills of painting right up to scratch. So it's really satisfying when you're working from an object and you can paint it and immortalise it. I mean I've just been finding pots and like little dishes and fruits and all sorts of things like around the studio, around the house and you can kind of make a little stage for yourself and paint it at your leisure. It's a really good relaxing painting thing. It, 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 I find it quite soothing so I thought well let's just devote the week to it this week. So it's really good to start with a piece of fruit with a still life because of the organic shape. Um, this painting is basically three colours that we're going to use today. It's yellow ochre, ivory black and warm English red with a bit of white. Okay, four colours, but that's at the end. Um, it's a really satisfying composition when you just have one thing to focus on. When you start adding more like items into a still life, it becomes a bit more challenging. So we'll keep it really simple. There's such a big history of artists painting pears. It's a really kind of traditional step one with the still life and... Yeah, I've, I've actually got one in my fruit bowl, so that's that's also why I'm going to paint. So I'm going to paint this today really traditionally going old school with a shadow box and a plumb line. So in case you don't know what they are, shadow box is a way to block out light and set the stage for your still life. So you focus on one spot of light only, blocking everything else out. And I'll use a black one today, but they can be anything from cardboard boxes, planks of wood, just a way to control the setting of the light so you can work on it all day. So a plumb line is just a weight attached to a string, but da Vinci actually famously used a plumb line as a way to measure perspective, saying, Accustom yourself to hold a plumb line in your hand that you may be the judge of the bearing of the parts. <laughs> Which means, as you're judging, the bearing of the parts, the dimensions of your still life, you're then transferring those measurements onto your canvas um, directly and constantly as you're painting. deriving from the Dutch word stilleven or the French natre mort, the arrangement of inanimate objects. Although it gained popularity in the 16th century, it was actually around in ancient Egyptian times. In 15th century BC, we see the most famous tomb, the tomb of Mena, with a still life depiction of funerary objects, fish and crops in bowls, which I think is amazing. So Greeks and Romans did similar depictions with mosaics and frescoes. There's a really famous one, still life, painting of a glass bowl with fruits and vases, which is a first century AD painting found in Pompeii. Then we have the Dutch Golden Age. So the Dutch Golden Age is the arrival of still life in history fully. It is where the Vanitas paintings arrive, which was inspired by Memento Mori. No longer just looking at flowers, but by looking at the Latin translation, which means, remember you have to die. So they started painting these kind of macabre still life selections of skulls and waxing candles, flowers slightly on the turn, over ripening fruits, 
meaning, like meaning that you'd have to be reminded that nothing is forever, everything is transient. Still Life made a huge post-impressionist debut with Vincent van Gogh's Sunflowers, although retrospectively they weren't very successful at the time, but now we see in history that paintings like Cezanne's Still Life with a Bowl of Cherries, Cezanne's Still Life with Basket of Apples, uh, it's just the arrival of still life in a whole new way. No longer do you have the perfect figurative displays, vanitas paintings of apples and vases and fruits. You have, like Suzanne depicts, strange angles of the, the planes of the objects. Nothing quite fits, the colours are way too vibrant, but somehow it blends together to make extraordinary painting. So Picasso in 1944 with his still life with a lamp is, I think, one of the most strange and interesting cubist paintings of a still life. The colours and the strong lines create shapes and dimensions with a still life which takes it into a whole new territory. A little bit before that in 1909 with Georges Braque, his still life with a metronome, again it's just like its own universe. Suddenly the still life isn't just about inanimate objects, it's about the oscillation of shapes in its own world and how each shape and colour kind of vibrates on the canvas next to each other. Even looking at recent pop art history with Roy Lichtenstein's 1972 painting Still Life with a Windmill, you see how recent artists are using their style and contemporary twist on still life painting to bring relevance for the whole way of painting still life into contemporary painting. So history shows us that with still life artists are looking at light, colour, context, contour in their painting. And I think bringing that into my practice with this pair I've been making is a really refreshing way to look at history and make it relevant. life and how I've been using it this week in painting, I think looking at history as well has made me realise how it is still really relevant for my practice even though it's not really a big part of my way, the way I paint in my art life. It's something that's just nourished my painting this week and given me a refresher back to basics of looking at light and shape and contour and tone. Still life is such a big subject. I've literally chosen a couple of artists plucked out of history just to give you an example of what I found fascinating but if you find it interesting and want to learn a bit more about it yourself and share it with me in the comments I would absolutely love that. Um, so yeah I hope you found it interesting. I'm now going to go eat my pear because I've been looking at it all week and I'm desperate to just eat it. So I'm going to go do that and I will see you next week. Bye! It is just the best thing. Oh my god, it's so good.